Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the CHALL, and today, Chow Chats, Dunkster Rovers 2, Forest Screen Rovers 0, FGR went down the rabbit hole and came out with nothing. Dunkster Rovers Football Club comes out with a brilliant record. It, I believe it's their third consecutive win for the first time this season. Four wins from the last six, I believe. One loss in ten. Um, and also, it's just a fantastic record overall for Dunkster Rovers. Now, before we get started with this, make sure you do like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss another YouTube video. And for now, let's get into it. Dunkster Rovers 2, Forest Green Rovers 0. So, overall, pretty good game. I think for me, I think that, you know, it, it wasn't the best performance in the world, but I tell you what, we did well, and we had to be, I think as fans, we had to be really patient with it was Forest Green, for me, we, we, we saw it at the start of the game. They sat with the flat five. They they played quite deep. They were waiting for us to make a mistake. They were looking for counterattacks. And there was one particular moment in the first half where I noticed where they were trying to throw it quickly down the, down the near channel to where I was sat. And they were trying the fast one. And I could see what they were trying to do. They were trying to play for counterattacks, try and sit deep and hit us on the breaks. Because they knew, they know that Donny will press high. We know they know will press high. So what they tried to do was sit deep with the flat five and basically just try and press it. Catches on the high press, float over the top or float down the channels on fast breaks, and try and use the space on either flank to break down and utilize the wing play from counter-attacking positions from direct and defensive counter-attacking positions. So what we did very very well was. Jamie Sterry and James Maxwell in the wing-back roles or full-back roles of the back four, um, who bombed forward but also tracked back. They made the overlaps when they needed to on the break. They tracked back into shape. They got back into shape pretty quickly. They regrouped pretty quickly when Forest Green were trying to catch some breaks. And we did well. We did well to lock them out. Now, Forest Green didn't have a shot on target until they put the ball in the back of our their own net So in the second half. So... Again, that's something they've really got to watch out for. I don't think their final third um, chance creation was up to par, in my opinion. I, I, you know, there was. I think going into it, you know, I know, so, I know, a lot of fans were, you know, we're going to win this game. It's Forest Green. Look where they're on the table, things like that. I was going into it with, well, hang on a second here. Forest Green Rovers have had some decent form in recent weeks. They are getting closer and closer to escaping that relegation too. And Steve Cottrell's got them in a great position. We have to be wary of them because Christian Deutsch has got the ability to score goals from anywhere. So we had to be very, very careful. But they they didn't set up right, in my opinion. I think they set up way too, way too defensive. And look, you know, against a team like Donny, who's going to press you very, very high and go for it. I think for Forest Green, you sh in my opinion, you should have gone for it. If, if, if you're trying to go for it, it definitely didn't work, in my opinion. I think you sat quite deep. You waited for counter-attacking opportunities. You waited for us to make mistakes. Um, and there were a couple of times where we misstepped a couple of passes. But, you know, that's that's expected. You know, I'm not going to minuscule mistakes, etc. Obviously, we're going to talk about them. We're not going to minuscule every single mistake we make. Um, but for me, Forest Green should have done a hell of a lot better in the final third. I thought we did fantastic. I felt like we held our own. We... We knew we were struggling to break them down. We were putting the balls into the right areas. And I, and I spoke to some of the under-18 players in the academy and speaking to Frank Sinclair up in the up in the stand during the game. And, you know, I was saying to, the, I was saying to them, I said, look, I can see what they're trying to do. And, you know, we're putting the balls in the right areas, but we just couldn't find the back of the net. So what we need to do in the second half is just work the ball into the back of the, into the box again and just get it in the right areas again and just... Just, just break them down because all it will take is one goal and we'll get a second and maybe even a third. So we came close to getting a third towards the end of the game as well. So it could have very easily been three or four in the second half. But after the first goal, Forrest Green just didn't, just didn't listen, just didn't seem to learn from that first goal. And, you know, Molyneux getting the first and being responsible for the second, which obviously came off as an own goal officially from Richard Keogh. Who, who, by the way, great guy. Spoke to him before the game. Brilliant, brilliant guy. Great leader on the pitch. And for me, I think Richard Keogh is the kind of experience that Forrest Green needs to stay up or try and stay up. 
If they go down, they've got a great manager in Steve Cottrell who will try and get them back up. And they've got some decent players already in that squad that can do well at National League level. It's just going to take some time. But I don't know what happened with Forest Green in the second half. It just They just collapsed. And, it, you know, one by one, it fell apart. And, you know, Rovers did very, very well to keep going and going. And, you know, Matthew, Matthew Craig, now there's a name. There is a name. And in fact, a wonderful guy called Jack on X or Twitter, um, he put something up about Matthew Craig, uh, some some stats, etc., uh, about Matthew Craig. And uh, I'm just trying to find it on here now. And this is basically what Matthew Craig did in that game. Three chances created, 70 touches, nine passes into the final third, the most foul player on the pitch with two. And he's a very physical midfielder. He plays it really, really well. He gets into the right areas. He makes things work. He gets things moving. He links the play. He's not afraid to get down and dirty in, in, in the midst of it, in the physical side of it. And he's just been this brilliant signing for us. And I want to speak about Matthew Craig a second because he's up there, in my opinion, for a contender for man of the match for that game. Obviously, Luke Molyneux got it. I can see why one possibly two goals if it weren't for getting the touch off Keo, I think it would have still gone in anyway, in my opinion. But let's talk about someone who didn't get man of the match, who definitely should have got man of the match as well as well and you, Matthew Craig. And you know what? I'm going to quote what I said on Twitter after the game as well. I said when we first signed him, he's got legs, he's got energy, and he just needs that senior loan. He's a potential leader in the making. I said that in my video, and I've been proven right. And many others who have said that, have been proven right. He's got the legs to go for 90 minutes plus. Bearing in mind he's just come off of missing a game and going straight back into the starting lineup after a little a little minor knock after the Swindon game. So he's come straight back in after a week and, you know, he comes in and puts in a man-of-the-match type display. He's got the energy. He goes for days. He's got the energy, the physical energy, the mental energy, the stamina and, and uh, the stamina-based energy in his legs. And he's a natural-born young leader. Spurs have got a really good young player in Matthew Craig. Now, it's all a case of what is his future at Tottenham Hotspur because if it isn't at Spurs, I think he'll go in the summer. Do I see him coming back to us? I mean, with his performance at the moment, I wouldn't be surprised if League One was scouting him. But if the chance was there to go and get him, I'd like us to go and get him personally. But we'll just see what happens on that because Matthew Craig, for me, is just an exceptional young player. Another player who's definitely going to be scouted by League One clubs this summer, Hakeem Adelaken. I'm going to do a Rio Ferdinand. Get that contract, get the contract, put it on the table, get the pen and paper and sign it because Hakeem Adelaken is one of those League One intelligent players in League Two football that just is playing way above his level. He may not have got a goal yesterday, but I'll tell you something now. Adelaide is a fantastic player. He's a direct winger. He isolates his man on one-on-ones. He has the magic feet. He cuts inside. He turns back on the outside. He sent a player on his backside. You saw the out-of-context Rovers clip. Get the sniper rifle out. Target acquired. Call of Duty all over again. Hakeem Adelaide can just turns players inside out with his magic feet. He works players into a dizzying frenzy, like a game of Twister, and he just cuts inside with the greatest of ease and cuts back on the outside if he needs to. Adelaken's a very direct, quick, pacey, experienced winger, and he loves it here at Rovers. Rovers love him. We want him to stay. I'm pretty sure he would want to stay if he had the choice. But If he had the choice, he'd want to stay, in my opinion. And if the deal's there to be done, let's get it done. You know, I'm, I'm so glad of... You know, what we've done this week, Maxwell and a brand new two-year deal. I had my doubts of whether we would keep Maxwell because I'm sure there'd be other clubs looking at him. But I'll tell you something now, it's fantastic to see Maxwell getting that two-year contract. I'm sure Molyneux will be up next. You know, there has been teasers for weeks now. And I'm sure Molyneux will be next for a contract extension, maybe a couple of years, my, my personal prediction. Westbrook, I'd like to see him get his extensional clause triggered on his contract because he's he's got he's one of the ones that's got some kind of clause in his contract that we can extend. So hopefully we get that done. See what the season see what next season goes for him. For me though, I think that one of the biggest surprises is Lotatala. I think that he, 
you know, he was signed when the club went through that financial penalty for last season for one of the loan payments being, uh, you know, misdone. And the signing came under a bit of a cloud. He was a good player anyway at Steven his last season on loan. And he's proved himself again. He kept, he's, got his, he's got his clean sheet. He made his, a couple of saves in that game. And he did what he needed to do, and you know what? I think it was the I think it was the second goal. Actually, it might not have been the first goal. I think it was the second goal. I, you know, where I was sat, I saw him run straight over to Joe Oliver, who was warming up on the side, and and just hugging him. I don't know if anyone else noticed that, but I saw him go straight over and we scored, hugging Oluwu, and that passion between the two. Honestly, the the togetherness of this squad right now and the togetherness of the players and the manager and the staff right now and the fans, you know, we struggled to break down for a screen in the first half. They sat really compact in the first half in terms of defensively and we couldn't break them down. And I think if that were last season under Schofield or even under McSheffrey sometimes, I think that some of our fans would have absolutely lost patience. So fair play to the fans yesterday who didn't lose their patience that stuck with them no matter what, that knew what was coming, that knew the goal was coming. And fair play for sticking with it and being patient because, you know, yes, there were a couple of Facebook outcries from a can to go under that bad run. But I'll tell you something now, fair play to the 99% of fans that stood by Grant McCann, even when other people said we need to start questioning Grant McCann. We stuck with him. We knew what was coming. We knew what he was capable of, and he's proving us right spot on. One loss in 10, three consecutive wins, four out of the last six. And I think it's, I think it's three on the bounce at home, four out of the last six, one loss in 10. Win the two games in hand, I think we're up to about 12th or 13th, depending on other results. Um, I mean, if we win our game in hand, we'll be over Bradford. So that's a good thing anyway. But, um, but I think Bradford have got more problems than Donny to worry about at the moment. But um, but in all seriousness, you know, it's obviously not a great situation at Bradford and hopefully they do resolve it soon in terms of a neutral perspective. But um, for Rovers, I, I, you know, win more of these games. You know, we've got eight games left. I could see us winning at least five of them. Um, there's a couple, there's definitely a couple there which could be uh, potentially risky. In fact, I've got all the results. Well, I've got the... Uh, next upcoming games for us here, actually. Um, so when we look at our last eight games of the season, Crawley away on Good Friday. I'm not there for that, unfortunately. However, I will be watching it from home. We've got Wrexham at home. I'll be going to that one because I've got a friend of mine coming over from St. Louis. Shout out to you, Mr. Tom. And uh, he'll be coming over for the game. So hopefully give him a win against the Welsh Dragons, the Red Dragons, however that's called you. Uh, the Hollywood Dragons uh, will give you a nickname. Um, so hopefully we'll get a win when they come down to the Eco Power. Then we travel to Morecambe. That one's going to be an interesting one because Morecambe, you know, I mean, looking at Morecambe's sort of last few games, I mean, they've lost the last four. They've won two before that. You know, they've not been on a fantastic run of form, so there's an opportunity there if they don't get any more wins between now and then. Walsall at home, get a bit of revenge on them. Shout out to Mo Fell. Hope you're doing well, mate. Then we host Accrington. Again, that should be interesting. I mean, looking at Accrington's run of games, they've only won one in the last eight. One win in eight is not great. Again, that could change between now and then. Then we host Barrow, who... Slipped a bit from when we looked at them around Christmas time. So there's a chance there to win if we if if we really turn it on. I think Barrow's going to be the toughest game of the lot. Then we've got Colchester away. They're in a spot of bother. Could be a, a nice shot for three points. We'll see what happens there. And then we go away to Gillingham, which hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll be bringing my girlfriend along for the last game of the season. So again, Gillingham's going to be an interesting one. They got the win on the weekend, so... You know, it'd be interesting to see how Gillingham finish the season. They're going to be chasing the playoff spot potentially. So let's see what happens there. So when you look at those run of games, I could see a couple there that could be tough. I think Accrington or Morecambe, depending on how they go between now and the time we play them. Barrow, obviously, going to be there or thereabouts anyway. So is Gillingham. But apart from that, I mean, Wrexham, we should have beaten them in the away fixture. I don't think they're as impressive as 
you know, the table shows. But again, we can't take them lightly. They are in the top three, top five-ish. So, you know, Wrexham are still going to be hard enough. But the, the other teams, I could see us getting a win against. Crawley, they're going to be tough. But if we if we do what we did against Forest Green, I could see us getting a win out of that. Um, Walsall, I could see us getting revenge on them. Colchester, I could see us getting a win over them. You know, on paper, I could see us winning at least four or five of those games. Do I think we're going to make the playoffs? No. Should we dare to dream? Keep it in the back of our minds. But I don't really feel confident of playoffs. But I'm not going to disclose the fact that we do need to hope for things. But I'll tell you what, if we finish anywhere higher than 14th this season, after after where we were about five, six weeks ago, that's still a good season. It's a better season than last season, regardless of what happens. So, because at the end of the day, the table position doesn't lie. The table itself doesn't lie. So you finish four places higher than you did last season. That's a better season. Fact. Fact. It might not be ideally what we want, but it's fact. It's progress. So, and the good thing is as well, it puts us in great stead for next season. One final thing before I sign off. And again, I'll shout out my friend Jack, who's an analyst on, uh, on socials. And we spoke about this. And we spoke about the summer and what we should be looking for. And we spoke about it, and this is what he kind of said to me. An attacking midfielder that can go in and press out of possession in the opposition's half, so someone who can really get in there and be involved in the press with the front three. A deep-line midfielder to help in the build-up, someone like a Matthew Craig-style player, as he will be going at the end of his loan spell. A younger centre-half, maybe, who's left-footed to add some pace, which gives balance alongside Wood or Anderson next season. Uh, if Wood doesn't sign an extension, then it'll be Anderson next season. A left winger who comes in, who comes short, isolate the man one on one, have a bit of flair to him. So again, we could look at Adelaide on a permanent deal, failing that someone else of that mould. And then a, a ball playing goalkeeper who's happy to join in the back three and build up. So someone like a Lota Tyler or someone like that. So that's given me some some help with the recruitment side of the of the summer transfer window for the recruitment plan in the summer. And I'm really excited for the summer because we've got a potential opportunity here to recruit some really good players. And with Terry Brownell as chairman now, and with Grant McCann, I'm sure wanting a certain type of player and certain aspects of players in terms of traits that, that they need to improve on and skills that they've got, which makes them stronger. So I'm more confident about the summer than I ever have been. And um, it's going to be, you know, I think that the mood around the ground and the mood around the club at the minute is really progressing us forward. So, you know, we, the only thing is we can't make it a regular thing. We can't have really poor seasons and then go on a great run at the end of the season and say next year's our year. We, we, we can't go into that cycle of doing that. I don't believe we will do that. But obviously, you, you know, you don't want to fall into some kind of vicious cycle where you want to succeed and it, and it doesn't quite end up happening that season. So I'm confident about next season. I hope you guys are more confident about next season as well. I'm going to go online now, all guns by and say, we're going to win the league and things like that. No, I'm going to analyse what, what our summer window is and then go from that. So thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. Make sure you do like, comment, subscribe. And for now, I am the C-H-A-L-L. Ta-ra for now. Three points. Off to the South for a pint.